Hey folks, this is Matt once again with probably one of the last viewer request reviews that will be done this month. And that's for Christopher Smack, who wanted me to do this film, 2010. Of course, the sequel to 2001 Space Odyssey, directed by Peter Hyams, starring Roy Scheider, John Lithgow, uh, Bob Balaban, Keir Dully. Helen Mirren, written, produced, and directed by Peter Hyams. Now, Peter Hyams is probably one of my, if I've had a top ten, he'd be in there as favorite directors, Peter Hyams. He's, he's done a lot of good films. Outland, my favorite Sean Connery film. He's done Running Stare with Billy Crystal, Gregory Hines, entertaining film. Time Cop and Sudden Death, fun uh, John claude Van Damme movies. End of Days. I think it's an awesome Arnold Schwarzenegger flick, underrated. Um, Narrow Margin, that's a good one with Gene Hackman. And it seems like Peter Hyams, a lot of his films were not really much of a big hits. But I think this is this and Time Cop are his biggest grossing movies. Even then, they were like 40, 45 million bucks or so. But. I enjoy the original 2001 Space Odyssey. I enjoy it. I do like this more though. This one's definitely faster paced in a way. It's definitely shorter. And most of all, it's more to the point. Like 2001 Space Odyssey is more about Stanley Kubrick being very artistic. <clears throat> you know, if you see Stanley Kubrick, you know. You see a film of his, you know what he's trying to do. This one is much more to the point. It's much more, I don't know if I should say simpler, but it's much more straightforward. I think that's the best way to put it. It's a much more straightforward film. Um, of course, it takes place nine years after 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh, Roy Scheider is this guy who... He was kind of head of the mission in the first film. Like he sent the guys out there. But since all that went haywire, he's now just a teacher. He plays a Dr. Floyd. Haywood Floyd, I believe is the character's name. And Peter Himes does a lot of uh, great job directing. Like in the opening, you have that, of course, that song was also Spot Zarathustra. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Ba, ba, da, da. A classic score, and then 2010 popping up, which is weird. 2010, it's like, wow, that was last year. <laughs> that was last year, but we didn't make content. What the fuck? It is weird seeing a futuristic movie in 2010, and it's like, that was last year. This is May 1984, so it seemed like a long time from then. <laughs> but um, it's one of those films. Roy Scheider is at this sort of all these satellites and this Russian guy comes and one of these to another takes place at a time when uh, Russia and because remember this is 1984 so you have the Cold War going on Russia and America there's tensions rising and the Russians are going to have their spacecraft up there first but he's sort of Russian guys talking to Roy Shire saying if we work together We'll get there first, but you guys know the, the Discovery ship from the first movie and the HAL 9000, so you guys can make it work. And Roy Shire's like, well, why would we do that? But then he finds out that the ship is orbiting and it's going down, so it's going to blow up. It's going to crash into orbit on uh, one of the moons of Jupiter. And... One thing leads to another, he and John Lithgow and Bob Balaban join this Russian crew and they go off to go to the Discovery ship from the first film, reboot the HAL 9000, and this is basically about their mission to do that. Now, the film has great special effects. I think the special effects work fine today. I think these special effects look better than any of the CGI today. That's my opinion. I do think the special effects look better, much better. They look more pleasing to the eye. I think it's really stellar special effects. Um, I definitely like the cast more than 
the first film, it's okay cast, but Roy Scheider, who's no longer with us, great actor from Jaws, from a lot of films. Roy Scheider, he's always been a great actor. He does a solid job here as the lead. John Lithgow is fun. Um, and like certain things happen in a mission, like they have to do this uh, slingshot maneuver because they don't have enough fuel to get there. They know that. So they got to do like a slingshot around. Uh, rebooting Hell 9000, figure out what happened. And actually this film made me enjoy the first one more because this one made it made me understand the first film more, like the Hell 9000, the reason it kind of went bonkers was that it was told to lie, and it didn't know how to compute that, so it messed up. A little bit of what the monolith, because they found a monolith, there's a monolith near where the Discovery's at on the, one of the moons of Jupiter. And one thing leads to another, and... You also have appearance of Tear Dully, Dave Bowman. He appears once in a while, saying that they have to leave very quickly in a few days. What's going to happen? Something wonderful. It's not an action film, not in the least. Um, it's not really a thriller. It's more of a sci-fi, I don't know if you call it a drama, maybe. Just a science fiction film, not an action film at all, not a thriller at all. You have a little bit of suspense where, uh, like, you have some fun banter, some humor with John Lithgow. It meets this uh, Russian guy named Max who's helping them. John Lithgow is an engineer, but he's not used to being in space. And the guy's helping him out, and they sort of form a bond, which they have some good back and forth, like John Lithgow asked him how to say things in Russian, like chicken, or, you know, I feel dumb, how do you say dumb in Russian? Um, and then the, the reverse, where Max is supposed to go look at the monolith, and John Lithgow doesn't really want him to go, and then, unfortunately, one thing leads to another, something comes out of the monolith, and Max pretty much guess he's dead. You also have intersperses with the the news sort of people back home telling them about how tensions between the U.S. and Russia are rising and rising. How you know there, there's a probability there's, there's going to be war. And I know as I guess some people might not sound like an interesting movie, but the film moves at a good pace. It's solid filmmaking is what I enjoy this film as. It's great special effects, great cast. Um, the opening really shows well where you like the characters, especially Roy Scheider's character. Him trying to convince the guy to get him to go on the mission. Him uh, spending time with his with his woman and his uh, son. And he has a nice pad because in his home there's actually a fucking swimming pool with dolphins in it. <laughs> so it's a nice pad. He's got fucking dolphins in his own home. Um, the music uh, is really beautiful music by David Shire. Not sure what else the guy's done, David Shire. But he did a really beautiful job on the store. Got some really nice uh, touches, as well as that music appearing at the beginning and the end. Um, basically, I'm just looking up the, the film. Why not? I should have looked this up before. It got kind of decent reviews. You know, it didn't get bad reviews, but it didn't get the greatest reviews. I guess it's one of those things where when you compare it to the original film, a lot of people just sort of, you know, it didn't ruin the first film, but at the same time, it wasn't anything special, which I just, I mean, I disagree with that. Um, it was nominated for some Oscars, it didn't win any. It was nominated for Best Art Direction, Makeup, Effects. Costume design, sound presentation, didn't win any, which is too bad. I'm not sure what won on, uh, I'm not sure what actually won for Best Special Fets in 1984, but this is 6.6 .6 on IMDb, which isn't too bad. 6.6 .6 isn't too bad at all. Um, 
But wasn't... I guess apparently the score was composed by Tony Banks of this... Uh, I guess of the band Genesis. But the score was dropped. So they got this guy, David Shire. And David Shire... That's why I'm looking. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at what he's done. I wanted to check back on what he's done. Composer. He has composed Zodiac. I think that's the one that David Fincher did. He composed... I can't remember what the hell else he composed. I'm uh, just looking. Monkey Shines. He composed that. Short Circuit. Um, no, he did the score to Short Circuit. I like the score to Short Circuit. But either way, it's an entertaining film. It's a solid uh, filmmaking. Uh, I enjoyed the ending where they find out that one of the moons of uh, Jupiter, as they're trying to leave, you have a little bit of suspense with, like, if they tell HAL 9000 that... In order for them to succeed, Hal is going to be destroyed. Is he going to go bonkers again? Is he not? Also, you have the thing where uh, he, they see like the, the big mile of his badge, and they find like like thousands and thousands of little miles, and the the moon is sort of eating away. They don't know what the hell's going on. And I really enjoy the the ending because this is sort of a feel good, uh, positive message where you find out that what's happening is the creation of a sun. A, a sun. And now sort of the Earth has two suns, and that made, you know, people at home sort of look, and a message was sent with the help of... And the nice thing about it, it is a positive message, you know, like, you know... These are your planets, but use them responsibly. You know, use them in peace. Um, just stay away from the, I think, Europa. And you realize, and I kind of got the, as I'm watching it, and I kind of got the idea what they were going with, where the last shot, the the moon, the Europa, it was like this nothing there, but then it becomes sort of this jungle as an, an area that can sustain life, probably with the help of this this other sun. And you realize that there's another monolith, which remind me of the beginning of the first film, 2001. So maybe the idea is that on Europa, you have this monolith. And what happened in the beginning? You had apes looking at it and getting the idea of gaining knowledge or something like that. Um, the thing of it is there will be other life there. And I know I'm going all over the place. So I'm trying to find the best way to word it. There's the idea that, you know, another life will come up there and, you know, maybe they will meet us and vice versa. Because it also made more sense now that when Roy Shire, he's doing like a little monologue at the end, like maybe the children of the new son will meet the children of the old. And yeah, maybe that's what he means. And you know, it'd be interesting to see what if they did a third film. Like I know there's one called Three Thousand and One. I don't think they'll ever do it, but I'm just saying, if they did, I'd be interested. Because I know it deals with the character of Frank Poole, the one that got pushed out in the the very first film, that Hal Nine Thousand cut us and he drifted off. Um, also, I'm, uh, my friend Efri is chatting with me on Yahoo, so I was going to ask him to come on sort of surprise him, but, you know, I think that'd be kind of weird. Uh, but 2010, it's a, overall, it's a solid film, it's an entertaining film, it's a film that uh, makes you feel good at the end, um, deals with, uh, Beautiful special effects, solid score. Um, 
Um, just a nice looking film. Uh, good looking film. Well acted. John Lithgow does great. Roy Scheider, I love him as a lead. Uh, pace is fine with me. It's more of a slower paced film, not action or explosions or anything, but it's trying to make a message, but not in your face. It's one of those films that's hard to review in the fact that, you know, it's not like tons of stuff happens, but at the same time, I really enjoy the film. I just like the fact that, you know, you watch the film and by the end you feel good. It, you know, you feel, you know, kind of nice about it. And that's not too shabby, especially in this time of age. But 2010, The Year We Make Contact, is definitely worth a look if you haven't seen it. If you've seen the first film and you haven't seen this film, definitely it's worth a look. Um, but not much for features. It's like a nine, eight, nine minute feature on the film from back in the day. Um, but that's all there is on features, which is too bad. I mean, I know the first film, I have the first film, has a lot of features. This film's not going to get any features, because it's kind of, I just one of those, I'm guessing it did well, because it made 40-some million bucks, which was a lot of money. But, you know, I don't know if people just, you know, not many people talk about the film, maybe that's another thing. Not many people talk about 2010 anymore, 2010. But, either way, I highly enjoy the film. Um, I think Peter Hines did a capable job directing the effects, the acting. The people who were the Russian crew, like Helen Mirren and such, they did their jobs fine. Um, has a little bit of message about, you know, war and stuff, but it's not in your face, which I appreciate. And overall, it's a very solid film. Definitely worth a look. It's good science fiction. That's what I'm getting at. But either way, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you later. Ciao.